Welcome, everybody, to the American Space Museum. I'm Mark Marquette, and we're so glad you're with us to stay curious. I am sitting in the what we call the delivery room of America's Space Age in Brevard County, Florida. Just nine miles to my left is the Vehicle Assembly Building. And Pad 40 today is getting ready to launch a series of Starlink communication satellites for SpaceX about 627 today. So well, you'll be watching that somewhere if you're a space geek out there. And we'll be out there, Marty Winkle, myself, today bringing you the Stay Curious program. We're not doing the launch live. We are doing an amazing mashup of over 81 human beings flying in space on December 2nd in space history. This is a mashup like you're not going to believe, so stay tuned for that. First, wanted to give a shout out to Nicole Stott, astronaut Earthling, is down in Antarctica getting ready for a Saturday eclipse of the sun that she's going down there with a, a, a group uh, to see in Antarctica. So hope everything's going good with you, Nicole. We're posting a few of your things on our Facebook page. And, uh, you know, we are on Facebook Live, YouTube, and Twitch, and we'd like to thank Saul Weinberger for following us and subscribing to YouTube. And you can do that and follow us. It's important that we get our hours up on YouTube so we can monetize that. Same way with our Facebook followers. Uh, once we hit 10,000 and we're almost at 9,000, we can monetize that. So uh, we know that everyone's out there enjoying space history. Tell your friends to follow us, share us, subscribe to us, and like us on any of these video uh, social platforms because uh, we are bringing you unique space history. And today is one of those days where we have a mashup of uh, four shuttles were launched on December 2nd, all right? And there we have the four right there, STS-27, launched in 1988. We're going to talk about that mission that almost didn't make it back. And STS-35 was a Department of Defense mission in 1990. 53 uh, was another DOD mission. No, that was a, uh, uh, in 1992, 53. I'll have to consult the shuttle scroll here in a minute. And 61 and 93 was the repair mission to change, put the eyeglasses on the Hubble telescope on there. And uh, so we're going to, we're going to map, plus we've got another six shuttles uh in space, orbiting in space history on this date, and two Russian Soyuz launches were on this date in history. Uh, and you add up the Skylab astronauts of Skylab 4 in orbit and the International Space Station astronauts, and we have a total of 81 human space flights occurring on this date, December 2nd. And I believe, Marty, back in September, we have a big mashup of a lot of shuttle missions and other missions coming together that gives us an extraordinary number of, of people. To put that in perspective, 578 humans have orbited the Earth. 81 uh, is about 12, 13 percent of them were uh, on this date in, on uh, December 2nd. But also on December 2nd were three space flights of this space plane, the X-1, actually the x uh, a, uh, X-1A and X-1B and its predecessors of this, flown by Chuck Yeager. Uh, we had, Chuck Yeager did two flights, number eight and number 11, on uh, December 2nd. One was in 50, uh, 1953, the other in 54. And a, um, another space plane pilot, uh, Everest, flew on this date in 1949. And, and, and many of you don't know Everest, but he... Uh, he held the, the land speed record for many years. Um, uh, uh, he went Mach 2, 2.3 times the speed of sound after, uh, of course, Chuck Yeager broke the sound barrier. And this is here is what we're selling this in our auction Saturday, okay? Don't forget our 18th Space Memorabilia Auction is December 4th, Saturday. You can come here at the museum or you can go to our, muse our AmericanSpaceMuseum.org uh, and uh, register for our auction. Uh, and there's 300 and some lots on there. Bidding has already started. You can get the bids up there. And this is our big fundraiser. Four or five times a year we do these auctions. Chuck Jeffrey, our collection analyst, was here Tuesday giving us a lowdown on it. Go back and look at that program if you missed it. 
Uh, you'll see some very cool items on there, including the Apollo 15 covers that were smuggled to the moon. He's got one of those on there that might go for thousands of dollars. We've got a John Glenn first day cover, the only one of his historic uh, record flight across the country back in 1957. That was called Project Bullet, Marty. Is that? I think it's called Project Bullet. And then we've got an item on there that uh, that uh, um, General Tom Stafford will personalize to you a space flown uh, flag uh, of the mirror of the uh, Apollo Soyuz test project. Marty, do we have uh, Miss Sullivan watching us on there? Yeah. Oh, Lisa, uh, Lisa Sullivan. Thank you. She had her family in here last week, and they're in the Atlanta area. So. Uh, her husband's moving here. To, uh, the whole family's moving here. He's working for Blue Origin, she said. So, Participate in our auction. If you're a little light in the wallet, you'll, you'll have fun watching it. And, and unbelievable prices going on. This is how we support our American Space Museum big time, is uh, auctioning off uh, uh, items that are on consignment uh, and items that we have that we do not need in our collections or have multiples of. So... Well, on this date were four launches of space shuttles. There we have that again. And the oh, STS-27 was not photographed by the USIAC brothers. Hello to Tom and Mark in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Uh, they're probably coat shopping about this time of year, Marty, <laughs> with the winter coming into Pennsylvania. But they did have something to do with the STS-35, 53, and 61 there. Tom is watching. <laughs> Hello, Tom. Uh, 5035 was the Astro-1 uh, space mission. Uh, why didn't I remember that? Uh, they had telescopes on board, and, and Sam Durant, an astronomer, was on that one. Uh, but let's look at what is going on in space history today. Um, 355 individual people have flown on NASA space shuttles, okay? Uh, and uh, today we, we've had a good... Uh, 70 of them uh, on today in December 2nd. And here is another look at our museum. Uh, as I look behind here, let me get out of that a second there, Marty. Behind here is our shuttle gallery, a picture I took a little bit ago to celebrate our shuttle gallery. If you've not been here, this is a real replica of the shuttle built. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah I got to go this way. Yeah, all right. I'm going the wrong This, this, no, this. This is built before the shuttle and all this was built. This is what they, an engineering model that they built to show politicians, contractors, all the muckety mucks that were going to be involved in putting their money into this is what they were looking at, the rotating service structure there. And we're proud to have this uh, in our confined space here. Actually, you also see in front of it the crawler controls that were actually in the crawler that you see on the bottom uh, there. You see the crawler over here. And then, um, yeah, help me out there, Marty. You see the crawler down there? And there's a piston out of one of the crawlers uh, up there to the left. It weighs 40 pounds. That's one piston. I think there's 12 pistons in the four diesel engines. Proudly on the left-hand side, though, uh, to the far left, Marty, you see the covers that were on the Last three missions of the shuttle, Atlantis, Endeavor, and Discovery, signed by the crew and by the closeout crew, led by our own Triple T, Travis Thompson, who will be here with Tales from the White Room tomorrow. So that's what we got going on back here, a little piece of our museum we're proud of back there. So, um, And here's another piece of our museum that's real, is the control console that fueled the shuttle all of these shuttles we're talking about today, all four launched and all uh, uh, six others that are in space on this day in history, all the fueling of that big fuel tank, the uh, external tank was monitored right here at this fuel station. How cool is that? You can come down now and sit in front of those consoles and pretend that you're fueling the space shuttle. I do all the time. It's a lot of fun. Uh, so we want to talk about our, the, three, the four launches today of space shuttles. Uh, the first one occurred in the 1988, STS-27, the third flight of Atlantis. And this one is one that goes down in history. Uh, 
spend a little time on this because uh, it was launched on this date and landed uh, five days later uh, on uh, the December 12th. It was a Defem Department of Defense mission, a top secret payload uh, for national security it was in the payload bay. And uh, but they knew that when they launched debris from the external tank hit the underbelly of the uh, space shuttle. In fact, outside the windows on the right hand side is that starboard side, Marty, on the right hand On the right hand side. They could actually see some of the damage and uh, uh, with their remote manipulator arm, they could see other damage under the belly a little bit. And uh, they were convinced who Gibson there on the right in the orange suit was convinced that they weren't coming back alive, okay? Uh, and this has been retold many times. There's a Wikipedia account of it. It was told in Mike Mullane's book, uh, Writing Rockets. And, uh, and then um, Jerry Ross, the spacewalker, uh, actually had a spacewalk on this Department of Defense mission that didn't count because it was top secret. But I heard Gary in an astronaut luncheon, or Jerry, uh, Ross at an astronaut lunch and said he did a spacewalk on STS-27 and it ticks him off. They won't count as number 11 because it would break his tie of 10 with um, um, Peggy Whitson, uh, such as space history. Uh, anyway, it, one report was that the crew was infuriated that Mission Control didn't seem concerned about the damage on the tiles they saw. Gibson thought we're going to die. Uh, that they wouldn't survive reentry. He said, no use dying all tensed up. Look out the windows. Uh, tell Mission Control. Uh, and he actually made a videotape to Mission Control, thinking, and I guess giving them down the road. Uh, Mullane recalled that while filming the reentry through the upper deck's overhead windows, quote, I had visions of molten aluminum being smeared backwards like rain or windshield. Though they landed safely, it was the most damaged space shuttle to ever make it back alive. And here is the underbelly. There's the landing at, at the Edwards Air Force Base. Look at the white uh, under the belly there is the tile that's missing. Okay, right up there. And um, then this is one of the close-ups of the worst damaged area where complete tile was missing and the burn through is in a section where there was like a, a, a reinforced girder, one of the few areas that had a structural girder type support for the, the shuttle. Uh, it happened right there. If it had happened to the upper left or the, or the, the bottom, it probably would have burned through and we would have had a, a situation where they would not have survived. Gibson, the commander, believed that the shuttle, had it been destroyed, Congress would have ended the shuttle program given that this was one, uh, the second mission after the Challenger accident and to lose two crews uh, uh, almost back to back would just be intolerable for the American public. So a little bit of space history there. Let's talk about a happy crew here. Of course, they were happy that they made it back alive. This is STS-35, Columbia, the 10th flight of Columbia. And here's the seven astronauts there. Uh, uh, and, um, oh, we had Vance Brand was the commander. Uh, he's in the middle. Of course, he was on the Apollo Soyuz test project. Guy Gardner's the uh, uh, pilot to hit uh, there to hit uh, to my left there. And he had Jeffrey Hoffman, John Lounge, uh, Robert Parker, and Sam Durant and Ron Ronald Paris were astronauts on there. Ronald Paris has passed away, and I think John Lounge has too. Uh, uh, passed away since this mission. But there was an astronomy mission. They had a telescope up there, a, a, a whole fleet of telescopes packed here in the uh, SSPF, Space Shuttle Processing Facility, uh, as they're putting the spacecraft telescopes in the cargo bay there. And uh, quite a successful mission. Then we had STS-35 launched on this date. It was a Department of Defense mission. Buford, Guy Buford there is in the middle. Uh, the... Uh, uh, David Walker was the co uh, po commander. Uh, there is, uh, you recognize Bob Cabana was a pilot. Uh, now he's the third in command of NASA. Uh, you got Guy Bluford, James Voss, <coughs> and Michael Clifford on that mission. And then we had STS-61, where Story Musgrave is the bald guy there. The first mission to go up and fix the Hubble telescope. Richard Covey 
was the commander. Uh, Ken Bowersox uh, was the pilot. Uh, Story Musgrave was the payload commander. Kathy Thornton was on her second space flight there. Nicol, uh, Claude Nicolier, Jeff Hoffman, and Tom Akers part of this. And we love our shuttle astronauts. They're in our communities doing wonderful things every day. And uh, so I'm naming a lot of them, the 81 humans who were in space on this date. Now, Story and Kathy Thornton were also on a previous space flight. Uh, so they were um, uh, on this date in history. So there's actually 79 different people were in space. And uh, went backwards there. And the next flight is, uh, there's uh, Kathy Thornton, because she doesn't have stripes around her, doing a repair on the, on the Hubble telescope. Uh, that it, it fixed the nearsightedness of the scope uh, in 1993. It was launched in 1990 and is still outperforming its longevity, uh, doing amazing science. And we got to get that Webb telescope up the week before Christmas so we can – no, December 22nd is the Webb telescope date, three days before Christmas, because then these two in space together will give astronomers a unreal picture of the, of the universe. Uh, went backwards again. I'm doing that a lot. There we go. And also orbiting Earth on this date were these seven missions from America. Okay. So we've got four launches, seven in space right now. That is 11 American space missions in space. There's 36 astronauts represented here. Uh, I didn't have time to put all the, the missions on there, but they're STS-93, STS-9 is on the upper left-hand corner, John Young's last command. STS-61B's in 1985. Uh, STS-80, Columbia, is in 96. Story Musgrave was on that one. STS-87, Columbia, was in uh, uh, 97. And then you got STS-97, who's in the year 2000, putting solar panels on there. And in the middle, we put our boys of Skylab 4. The third crewed mission to Skylab uh, was uh, about in the middle of their, eh, they're about a third of the way through their 84 days in, in, in space that they were going to spend till February. So uh, uh, their wake up call was uh, the, the song Misty by Julie Yun, L L London, uh, Skylab 4 was. Now, what I don't have a slide, I got one, one slide here, I do, yes. There were two Russian Soyuz flights on December 2nd. All right. The first one, um, uh, Salyut, Soyuz 16, was in uh, December 2nd, 1974, a long time ago. Two cosmonauts on that. And then in 1990, on this very date in history, the same date that we launched the Astrolab, I believe, uh, yeah, uh, the 35, uh, 1990, the STS-35 launched the same day within hours of Soyuz TM-11 with three cosmonauts on it uh, gone to the Mir space station. So we're adding those guys in there, and that adds up to an, an incredible 81 human space flight, 79 humans saying on December 2nd, I was in space. Imagine that. And, hey, we can't forget our seven heroes orbiting Earth right now. Hope you can go out and see them in your neck of the woods as they come over during the twilight time of the early morning or early evening. Here are our seven crew members of Expedition 66, where they've got the Route 66 sign of the interstate highway, the first uh, 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 true cross-country road across America, Route 66. That's why their emblems got the shield of the uh, famous road on there. So uh, there was even a TV show called that, right, Marty? Us old-timers remember that, Route 66. Oh, yeah. Yep. I drove it twice. You drove it twice? Yeah. Did you ever run it? I'm sure you've run it as a runner a few ran times. On it. Yeah, he's ran portions of it on there. And we wanted, Marty's saying we got Ishmael Jamal al Ramai. All right, Ishmael Jamal Al Rami. Okay, he liked us today, and hope you're. you're uh, don't know where you're at exactly, but thank you for watching us, and we do appreciate everybody on Facebook Live where we started this program in March 2020. All right, look at how beautiful it's become thanks to Jessica Galloway, our Trekkie Techie, worked remote with us today, Marty and I. We're actually running the whole show, Marty, like we used to. 
Uh, and uh, But we love Jessica and what she's done for our whole museum. And that's what happens in nonprofits is people show up at the right time to take us to the, the next level. And that's what we've done with our Stay Curious program. Celebrating our astronaut heroes orbiting the Earth. You add these six people in, and that does give you 81 human beings. And... Um, orbiting earth on this date in history you take that off a minute i wanted to mention that i have here we talk about i have my shuttle scroll here and my shuttle scroll is a real thing that it has got chock full of information of every shuttle mission and in 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 the super small type it tells you how many times that astronaut's gone to space as well as the orbiter and a whole bunch of other things and uh it's been very useful and a little uh, uh, piece of our stay curious uh, props here that, that we want you to become familiar with our shuttle scroll handy for me to, to pick up things and not on our shuttle scroll Marty is uh, as we're mashing up all these crews okay six shuttles in space I mean six launches and counting two Soyuz and six other shuttles that's 12 all right and then you add the uh, uh, three X-15 flights, or not X-15, the X-1 flights, the ISS and the Skylab, you have 19 important missions concerning space going on on December 2nd. And one of the weird things that happened when I was looking it up was, um, whoop, let me go back that way. Yes, uh, and we got a question real quick there, Marty. Thank you. Yeah, Dave Stang wants to know, is 81 a record? Well, Dave Stang, don't know if 81's a record. We, as we go through with uh, um, Stay Curious, we'll figure that out. Good question. We know back in September, we had the, towards the end of September, uh, we we have done shows where we had an extraordinary number of humans in space, and I think that was in the 50s. But we are setting a bar here, and I'll bet you'll never hear this anywhere else. Uh, in space news of mixing and all of these missions together and celebrating a, a way for the American Space Museum to celebrate our wonderful astronauts, cosmonauts, and and test pilots that uh, of the 1950s and 60s that have made space travel uh, what it is today. Now, I'm not going to say routine, okay, because there's always something's going to bite you when you think you're too comfortable. But uh, today we're launching... Uh, I forget the 27th, 28th mission of the day of the year off Cape uh, Canaveral Space Force. Uh, SpaceX launched another batch of satellites, uh, and uh, they're cranking up maybe five or four more launches here in December. But something beautiful happened uh, in uh, August of uh, 1990. When STS-35 on the left with the space uh, telescopes in it that was launched on this date passed in the night STS-38. Marty, do you remember this happening? Uh, it was August 9th in um, uh, 1990. And uh, I'll bet everyone went out there to, to watch it and took a bucket of chicken or whatever because rarely has a photo op like this ever happened again. I think it's the only time this happened. I forget all the details, but this was in August. Uh, STS-38 was a Department of Defense mission with Bob Springer, one of our supporters here at the museum. Uh, hi, Bob yeah, and his wife. Um, we uh, They were being pulled back to the VAB to fix an engine problem while STS-35 was going out to the pad in August. But it wouldn't have sat out there from August to December, Marty. They had to brought it back in for uh, something else going on there. But beautiful picture of space history. We'll talk about those UCAC brothers and see who took this picture because I couldn't give a credit to anybody, and I don't think it was them. And another reminder by way of our program today of celebrating the shuttle, there is our shuttle model, and there is Triple T, Travis Thompson, holding in his hands the bar that he used to open the crew cabin and close it, close it and open it. And Triple T will be here tomorrow to talk about some of these 79 uh, American astronauts who were in space on this date in history. And maybe he knew a couple of those five Russians that were in space on this date in history. So <clears throat> you're not going to want to miss that. Don't ever miss a show with Travis Thompson because we never know really what, what direction it's going to take. And we have all of Triple T's Tales from the White Room 
on our library on Facebook and also on YouTube. We're creating a separate section for Tales from the White Room with Triple T. So, Marty, thank you for <clears throat> all your help today. Thank you, Jessica, uh, for getting us up to snuff here. And uh, we're having a good day at the museum. A lot of people coming in on launch day for a SpaceX launch or a United Launch Alliance uh, uh, launch. So make sure one of those days that is you that comes by and visits our museum. Until then, I'm Mark Marquette saying I can't wait to see you to bridge the space between us. <laughs>